Hello, hello, all of you beautiful faces. So in my previous video, I did a video regarding the appearance of evil. That was in my reject or recommend video. If it doesn't, if it wasn't my last video, forgive me for that because they, I film all in one day and I do several days, sometimes up to 10 days of videos in one day. So um, that was the video I talked about um, abstaining from the appearance of evil. This video is all about that. This is going to be part of my new series of just sharing the word in some videos and not doing any kind of beauty reviews. And so these are the verses that we are going to talk about today. The, the scripture verse that gives you the exact verse about abstaining from every form of evil is 1 Thessalonians 5.22. That's a real mouthful. But um, you're, if you would like, grab a pen and a paper right now and this, or you can just go back and write them down after, but this is 22 scripture verses that talk about abstaining from the appearance of evil. And so um, the second scripture is Ephesians 5.11, and that says, Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. The next scripture is Romans 12, verse 2, and that says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that the, ye may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. The next one is James 4, verse 4, and that is, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. You guys, that can't get any clearer. There is absolutely no need when you read that scripture for somebody to break it down for you. And there is actually even a scripture in the Bible where the Lord says, that you should be at the point where you shouldn't have to have anybody teach you. When you have been a Christian for so long, God expects you to be mature enough to read the Bible and get your own revelation from Him without having to always have somebody break it down for you. That is what the Lord expects from us. So, and I can prove you that and it also says in the word to study to show yourself approved a workman that need not be ashamed one that rightly divides the word of truth and the reason why you would be ashamed is when you stand before the lord and you could say well i never looked it up in your word when the bible is basic instructions biblical instructions not even basic they're biblical instructions before leaving earth Look, you guys, this tells us every single thing we need to know about how we are supposed to be living every day. We are not going to have an excuse and say, to be able to say, well, Lord, you know, I wore mini skirts where my hoo-ha and my rear end showed because everybody's doing it. Well, you think that that's going to fly with the Lord God Almighty? Seriously? Because times have changed? Do you think that God does? I am the Lord and I changeth not, the word says. We are the ones doing all the changing and we are all flexing and, and, and compromising according to what the world is doing and that is enmity with God. The next scripture is 1 John 1 verse 6. So, we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing truth. Wow. That ought to scare the sin right out of some people. You know, the Bible also says that we ought to fear the God that can pick us up and throw us into hell. 
Yeah, you there's people who think that grace means we get to live however we want and we're going to be saved no matter what. That is utter foolishness, you guys. Because we are to shine everything we believe, even core beliefs that are not based upon the word, we are to shine it in the light of his word. And if it doesn't line up, then we are to reject it and we are to do it no longer. So the next scripture is Galatians 5, 20, verse 21, 20 and 21. Idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, quarreling jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these, let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how, how clear do, do people need it broken down for them, honestly. But people take the word and they twist it and conform it to their wretched lifestyle and say, well, that's how I see it. Well, it doesn't matter how you see it. It says we are to rightly divide the word of truth so that we will not be ashamed. Rightly divide means looking it up in the Greek, in the Hebrew. Hebrew That means considering many sources. It is not, I'm, and I mean many scriptures. You don't just take one and build an entire doctrine off of one scripture like many Christians love to do like Romans 8 verse 1. I mean, let's just go to that. There is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So you just go on and sleep with that guy's that that gal's husband because there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus like you should not feel guilty girlfriend because you just be banging someone else's husband and God just knows your heart honey yes they're separated oh yes let's go get some wine and some alcohol and let oh let's just party and you know the Lord knows our heart give me a break finish the verse to those who walk and live according to the word of God. It is not those according to those who live according to their flesh. You guys, the end is coming and it is coming soon. And we have got to wake up as the body of Christ and those, even those who are lost. And you need to call out to the Lord and ask him to come into your heart, to renew a steadfast spirit within you, to create in me a pure heart, O God. And to help us with the sin lifestyle that we have been living because let me tell you, hell is not going to be fun. And it ain't going to be Club Med. I can tell you that. The next scripture is Matthew 5, 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth. And salt is a purifier. Not something that putrefies. It purifies. But what good is salt if it's lost its flavor? You Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. That is an analogy for the person who has lost their fervor for the word and the Lord and for holiness and for righteousness. You are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. So do you think backbiting and slandering is your light up on a pedestal 
And everyone looks at it and goes, oh my gosh, praise the Lord. I can see the love of God in her. Oh yes, let's just smoke a dube. Oh, praise the Lord. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> and they're going, oh my gosh, look at her. Look at her. Wow. Holy. Oh yes. Holy Lord. I praise you. Oh, you guys want to, you think this is, think I'm being funny? I'm not. I don't care what you guys think. I care what the Lord thinks. And it is time for us to clean up our acts. It does not matter if the world legalizes cocaine. It doesn't mean it gives you the right to do it in the light of the word. I am not going to judge anybody that smokes marijuana. That is not my job. That is the Lord's. But I am going to absolutely share the word because it is what the Lord has called me to do. And don't, don't you all start leaving your nasty comments because I'll delete them and I'll just block you from my channel. The word is the word. If you have a problem with what I'm sharing, then you take it to the Father. But you better be comparing it to the word. You better be getting in the word yourself instead of coming on here and attacking me because you will pay the price for it. I promise you that because God does not take it lightly when you come against the anointing and his anointed children. He takes that very serious. So the next scripture is Colossians 3.12. And that's put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. Not slandering and ripping somebody apart because you're getting convicted and you're not liking the conviction. So you're going to turn it around and say, I'm condemning you. When I am not condemning you, I am simply sharing what the word says. And I did not write it, by the way. The next scripture is 1 John 1, verse 7. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. See, this is how it works, you guys, and I'm guilty of it myself. We are to renew our minds with the Word of God. And if we are not in the Word daily, then our mind is not being renewed. And all of our old patterns of behavior are going to rise up to the surface, and they're going to come out like, like dirty, stinky laundry. And everyone's going to see it. And I am not spotless in that area. I'm not. But you better believe I'm repentant and I am changing that about myself. Everything is changing about Pamela Ebert because I am choosing life. I am choosing the word over all things. And that's how it's supposed to be. The next scripture is John 3, 20 through 21. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly, plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. That's why I'm willing you guys to come on here and tell you my flaws. Because I have never professed to be perfect. I am a sinner saved by grace, but I am redeemed because I am repentant. And that means I change the behavior. It does not mean I'm perfect. It means I am looking, I am shining my life against the light of the word and I'm making the proper adjustments. The next scripture is 1 Corinthians 15 verse 33. 1 Corinthians 15.33, do not be fooled by those who say such things for bad company corrupts good behavior. Psalm 1 verses 1 and 2, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners or in the path of sinners, or sits on the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And 
in his law doth he meditate day and night. That means we have it for breakfast, we'll have it for lunch, and we have it for dinner. So that our mind can adjust to this, not so that this can adjust to our mind. God is never going to adjust to our way of living. We must adjust, adjust to his way of living. The next scripture is Matthew, um, Matthew eleven nineteen. Um, I'm gonna go down so that this doesn't go on too long. Romans twelve verse nine. Um, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. You know, I've had people come on my channel and call me a hypocrite and say that I'm, because I'm telling the truth about products, that I'm like a nasty, judgmental, mean human being. And then I go to their channels and look and they're like, what WTF, Ipsy, what the heck is with this bag? And it's like, you've got to be kidding me. So because I preach the gospel, because I share the word with you, I'm not allowed to give an honest opinion about a product. It's hypocrisy at its finest, and they will pay the price because God will not be mocked. We will all reap what we sow, including me, including you. There is nobody exempt from this. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere. And let me tell you, he is not the all-seeing eye. That is a mockery. Psalm 97 verses 10 and 11, Amos 5, verse 15, 1 Corinthians 10, 31 through 33, 1 Corinthians 8, 13, Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again so that I will not cause them to fall. Um, I'm, I'm going to honestly tell you, I don't honestly agree with that scripture because the Bible does say um, that everything has been sanctified under the blood of the Lamb for food. But if I were to be somewhere and they were offended by the fact that I was going to eat meat, then I'd be a vegetarian that, that night. You better believe it because we are not to offend people. The next scripture is Ephesians 6, 10, and 11. Proverbs 7, verses 10. And 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 4. On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God and trusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. So keep that in mind when you're sitting here judging me as you think I should be Jesus. I will never be Jesus. I don't want to be. I do not want that responsibility. And honestly, I wouldn't want to lay down my life for a bunch of wretched people. And that's the honest truth. Because I was not called and anointed to do that. I'd lay it down for my children. I'd lay it down for my husband. I'd lay it down for some people that I love but I will not lay it down for the whole world because I'm not Jesus. So don't come on here expecting me to be him because I'm not. It says we are all to do the work of an evangelist. That means to share the word. We are to be doing it daily. It does not mean in one breath be slandering and backbiting and participating in everything that's evil and then in the next breath preach the gospel. That's not what it means. So I am going to be do more, doing more videos like this that are strict teaching for those who want to just come and hear the word shared and then those who want the makeup and the word, you're still going to get them both. But I did want to share some teachings with you. One of my next teachings is going to be on your tongue, on the words that come out of your mouth So and what the Bible talks about that. So I love you guys. I pray. Look, the time is drawing near. I I believe it with every fiber of our being.
And those who really love the Lord know that this world is coming to an end. We, we couldn't even make it with what we're doing as human beings to this planet. We are destroying our own earth. That in itself should be enough to, for you to discern the seasons that we're in. And the Bible says we are to know the seasons. We, that is our responsibility to know them. It's not up to God to come knock on your door and go, Hey, Susie, by the way, it's the last days. You better get right with me. Mm -mm. No, he's knocking continually on the door of everybody's heart. And it's it's us that block him out. We block him out. But I love you guys. Please, if you don't believe in Jesus, come and ask him to show himself real to you. And I promise you, he will. Ask him to be Lord of your life. Ask him to come in your heart. Confess your sins. And ask him for forgiveness. It's not too late. It's never too late. I love you. And I pray that God keeps you safe in this crazy, crazy world we live in. Bye.